Tremendous excitement now with Chelsea on the attack. This is Osgood. Left foot shot. What a goal! Peter Osgood opens the scoring. One goal to nil for Chelsea after 55 minutes of play. And no wonder those Chelsea players are happy. seconds remaining it's Zocco Zocco's equalized there's an appeal for offside but what a killer only seconds remaining the score now 1-1 Cook to take the corner Well, Johnny Holland almost hit the roof when that one went in. Feeling a lot better, I should think, now, are you, Johnny? I can imagine John Dempsey's very pleased with that. Very pleased indeed. He had a similar one in the cup final at Wembley. And uh, I believe Sprake made a great save, so he'd be certainly pleased with that one. And there it is. Delighted Chelsea fans, but that's no more than Chelsea deserves. Very, very sensitive. Baldwin. Back to Harris. Number eight, Baldwin. Osgood. And he scored! Osgood has done it! That was a beautiful shot. I thought he'd have gone wide, but he picked his spot, and Osgood's down, leaning down, and just waving at the crowd. And so, after 38 minutes, Osgood has made it two. So, Johnny, you're two up now, so you think Chelsea can afford to relax a wee bit? I don't think they can. I think we ought to go at them as we have done and not give up at all. There's a great goal there, Peter. Uh, Tommy Broome made a great run there. I think they, the defence stopped thinking that Tommy Broome is going to get the return. He did it similar Wednesday night and just put it in the corner of the net. Great goal. Well, that's pleased those fans have stayed over to see you. Yes. The 2-0 then. Chelsea lead. After 38 30... been working hard for everybody else. Chelsea now going to bring on young Derek Smethurst. Well, they've got a quarter of an hour to go, two substitutes to use, but now Betis for Real Madrid. He's done it, he's scored! Real Madrid has scored! Betis has got one in with 15 minutes to go. And now, this really could be something of a last 15 minutes. And it's Osgood coming off. Smethers on instead of Osgood. Now, will Real be able to drag themselves up again? And... Chavo scored in the first round, second leg defeat against Olympiacos, a home defeat that for Dinamo. Set up for Shabo. McCoy in trouble. Massive clearance by McCoy. That's been a feature of Rangers in Europe this season. Now McLean. 
First shot on target, and it's come from Tommy McLean. Well struck attempt by Tommy McLean, who... Makovikov. Jardine in pursuit, and surely that was a foul by Sandy Jardine. Referee says play on. In towards Steen. It's Colin Steen, and Rangers have taken the lead. Just beyond the halfway point in this first half. And there is a magnificent finish by Steen. But Dinamo Moscow at Fiore's feeling that they should have had a free kick for the challenge by Jardine. And now there's been a pitch invasion by Rangers supporters, delighted that their team have gone in front. And by the skipper, Greg. Here's Smith, who's been most impressive in this first half. Johnson! It's a second goal for Rangers. It's Willie Johnson. Willie Johnson set up there by Dave Smith. And Johnson, who was able to get between Vasilev and Zhukov. Good Rangers in their third European final be on their way to their first silverware. It's another huge clearance, and here's Johnston. It's 3-0 now to Rangers. First minute of the second half, and Dima Moscow caught out completely by McCloy's clearance. Zhikov claiming there that they should have been an offside, but the goal will stand. Estrakov on with 11 minutes of the second half play. Dinamo now that they have to be much bolder if they're to get back into this final. Evruzikini. They've got to go back, and it's the substitute, Estrakov. An inspired substitution. Estrakov, who's only been on the pitch for four minutes, has got Dinamo back into this. It's 3-1 now. Domatov. Now Zhava. Goskovic. The introduction of the two substitutes has made a difference to this Dinamo team. Is just beginning to feel the effects. Played with so much passion during the first half. They were determined to impose themselves on this final. Now it's the turn of Dinamo. Estrakov, Gerskovic. Estrakov's goal has given Dinamo so much encouragement. Dolmatov. Now Gerskovic. Needed a save from McCloy. Martov, like Zhukov, with an opportunity to get forward, and it was a good set of that for Gershkovic. Steen. Steen with an opportunity to have a look around to see who's forward to give him a bit of help here. McLean. Peel guy, the goalkeeper, in trouble. The terrific work by Colin Steen. Rangers so impressive in Europe this season, although their Scottish League campaign was a major disappointment. And there might be possibilities here for Dinamo. It's off the line by Jardine. Dinamo so close to a second goal then. McCloy took the sting off the shot, and Jardine was aware enough to get back and to clear the danger off the goal line. And the ball didn't cross the line. Referee and linesman both perfectly placed. Here's Steen. He's trying to get away from Zhikov. And he's forced to save from Pielgar. Dinamo really gambling now. Four by Basilev. Oh, 
words come off Jardine. Sandy Jardine so nearly beating his own goalkeeper. It was a weary clearance by the normally reliable Sandy Jardine. Markovikov. He goes on. And he's got a second goal here for Dinamo. Just three minutes remaining, and it's now 3 2. Makovikov, who just brushed away the challenge from Matheson. Anywhere will do now. And that is it. Rangers have won here in Barcelona. I think it's yet another pitch invasion. You can understand the Rangers supporters' enthusiasm. Now, they're winners of the European Cup Winners' Cup. David Harvey covering the near post, or checking the near post. Firm Wayne Wall at the moment. 8 is Benetti, 11, Chiarugi. Chiarugi shot. And Chiarugi acknowledging the roars from the crowd. The shot really going straight in, Begon chasing after it. Here's the free kick again. The left foot through the wall. Goalkeeper got his hands to it, but off the post. Sabadini moving outside him. Milan really dictating things at the moment. Soliano is in the middle. There he is! And just past the far post. Soliano, who got up well, he wasn't picked up as he made the run on the near post. Paul Maisley up on the back of the box, wearing the number five shirt. And the near side as we look. Here's Lorimer. Norman Hunter is in there! And Becky not taking it cleanly. Plenty of umbrellas in the crowd. And Lorimer, I think, prepared to have a go. Becky having a good look. See. Well hit. Well saved. He's just managed to get to it from the follow-up. Myrini. Cherry. A little bit of trouble there with the defence. Bates. Jordan. Rosato couldn't get in the tackle. Jones blocked. A straight appeal for a penalty as Jones tried to get to the ball. And he's been booked for it. A penalty incident again. Jordan who made the break. Rosato really nearly fouled him then. Jones being pushed and shoved all over the place. He tries to turn. Is he tripped? Well, he certainly looked as though he was that time. Big on has made him rather committed himself, and leads are outnumbered at the moment. This is Chiarugi. Taking perhaps too long, or has he? The time then when they had a man over AC Milan. Maidley. Bates. Rini. Bates again, could try one. Good header and very good save. Joe Jordan again really has been playing very well for Leeds United up front. Lorimer on the left. Good effort, another good save by Becky. Sabadini again, well forward. Good try! And he's worth that quite a lot. Giuseppe Sabadini. Yaras. Bates. Ford across it to. Finds Frankie Gray. Maidley. Paul Maidley. Jerry, a 
could be an unfortunate slip. Be gone in on Joris. Got two to square it through. Be gone. Fine save by David Harvey. A save which just kept Leeds United in this match. A slip by Jerry, which left Be gone running in on Joris. Goalkeeper came to the six yard line and parried away for the corner. Yaris giving it away and there's a two against two remonstration from Rini Gerugi good effort and Leeds once more escapes with a mistake play both legs against Repi Bucharest earlier in the tournament Hunter McQueen in the back well, he was practicing that when the team came training here on uh, Tuesday. Immediately in the action, McQueen come to have a quick word with Les Cocker as we're looking at the AC Milan goal and their keeper. So Lorimer with the kick. Well, the goalkeeper got his body all behind it and grabbed it quickly on the rebound. Lorimer, who really hasn't been the hot shot that he can be but looking at it again he got hold of that but not in the way that only Lorimer can a bit short well picked up by McQueen well there was a chance for a go he's used it well Dorini and a feel for handball and the corner's given the referee will have none of it the lead bench going absolutely mad. A corner is a decision, a vehement appeal for handball. But the referee waves it away. Probably at this time more than any other, they're missing Bremner, Giles and Clark in the box. Gerugi. Saw Harvey off his line. And Harvey did well to scramble back. Player who cost an awful lot of money from Fiorentina, hiding the team. Although the flag being waved. That's a foul. And Hunter having a go at Rivera. And Soliano coming in and somebody's got to go. Mayhem on the pitch. Hunter really has got to go. Although he was fouled, in my opinion, by Rivera, he swung a punch at him and connected. The red card has been waived by the referee, but against whom? So much jostling go on, it's not clear at all who has been sent off. And I think it is Norman Hunter. Whether there's a Milan player, Soliano going as well, I'm not sure. Yes, he is. Soliano, number seven, sent off again against an English club. And Hunter, a very dejected, limping, disconsolate figure, coming off as well. The foul originally. Well, Hunter is still moving over to the referee, and the yellow card is out. Well, he hasn't gone, which I must say, I find amazing. I'm sure that the referee has said he's got to go, and he has indeed. The original foul by Rivera, the punch. Sent off of just shaken hands. And the 10 against 10 still battling on the field. Becky once more with a punch. Back by Rini. Jerry. Goal kick or corner or what? Referee having to go and sort out another melee. Being Cup winners' cup. And they have indeed. And the 
For AC Milan, Alberto Bigon. Yes, ready to take. Some distance is uh, out. He's uh, floated inside the area, and then the shot is parried away expertly by Schultz. It was a shot from Trasoldi. Some protection. His East German debut against Bulgaria back in 1969. Another player that started in that 72 Olympics team, and the header isn't that far away. It's Marvassan again. 12 goals. August, being taught by Rivera. Still Gianni Rivera. He made his Serie A debut for Alessandro when just 15, Rivera. Pass per Luigi Pizzavala. Spavasa. Coming towards August. Shot this time, flicks up and flicks behind, and he could have gone up anywhere. It was Sabadini initially that got in the way. That's a little bit of noise from the Rossignani supporters. This is Hoffman to the line, and that's a good save from Pizzabala, and it scrambled away, and Spavas is there, and he's still there, and Spavas, can he get the shot away? And again, Pizzabala to the rescue for AC Milan. Passage of play that so nearly brought another Magdeburg goal here. Spavas had an excellent chance, he poked it into. And then they've got to up their game against the East Germans, if they're to back on level terms. It's again here. Good man throwing away. And throwing on this near side to try and put some pressure on that uh, Magdeburg goal. It's a good looking ball in Rivera and it's off the line by Abraham. Whether that would have gone in, I'm not so sure the keeper was there as well. It was a well-directed header from Gianni Rivera, wonderful cross. I think it would have gone in, you know. Be gone with a flick initially. Benetti, Rivera wants it, still Benetti. Can't get the shot away first time of asking, then he can, and that's a good stop from Ulrich Schultz. 26-year-old former locomotive Leipzig man. Staying on his line. As the shot came in. Yes, I can string more than two or three passes together at the moment. Not one. Till. Could be in round the back here. Seguin scores from a tight angle. And Magdeburg have a second. It's Wolfgang Seguin that gets Magdeburg second. Yeah, Luigi. Pizzaballa beaten at his near post. Shot rifled into the roof. Another European trophy. And they disappointed tonight. Lanzi on goal just before half time. Schultz will knock it over. And then on 75 minutes, Seguin's goal. Torini to take. Sparvasa, who's been excellent tonight, as has the 19-year-old Martin Hoffman, willing to run it. Anquiletti Hoffman shot wide. The Oberliga title in 72, as we know. Can Milan get back into the game here and force a grandstand finish in Rotterdam? They need something. It's over the wall, but wide. towards Svarbasa. Tilt. Svarbasa gets the shot away. That's a wonderful save from Pizzaballa. That looked destined for the top corner. 
well-struck effort from Jürgen Sparwasser. And another good, confident, positive move from Magdeburg. Despite being two goals to the good, they have plenty forward in the attack. And getting players back behind the ball, August leaves it, and eventually it's come to Sparwasser. Zegin inside the penalty area. Still waiting for the cross to come in, and it's flipped back here. It still might be a third, and it's just over. Well, there were three players inside the six-yard area here. Svarvasa let it go. And when the cross came in, it was a wonderful flick. And Hoffman, I think, tried to get something on it eventually. It was Hoffman, just couldn't wrap the left boot around it. It is Till, goes for goal himself, side netting. Well, there's so many gaps now at the back. Out wide, looking for Enger, all played their part. Here is Gower again, Torini wins it back. The referee has seen enough, and it's Magnaberg with an historic win here against the... to do for Kiev, this is Madvienko. Onishenko. Munchia. Onishenko to his right, still Vladivir Munchia coming forward. Eventually into the path of Konkov. Oleg Bloki. Onishenko. And still Onishenko inside the penalty area. Onishenko scores. Vladimir Onishenko with 18 minutes on the clock at the St. Jakob Stadium in Basel. Has put Dynamo Kiev ahead against Ferenc Baras. Wonderful run that took him first left and then cutting field. And the left-footed shot from Onishenko. Scoring the winner. So a little bit of history between uh, a number of these players on show tonight. Both sides. Here is Konkov. And scores to settle, perhaps, from that semi three years ago. Onishenko, the goal scorer, has another crack. Oh! Onoshenko has done it again. Well, just six minutes before half time, they didn't seem too much on. And Vladimir Onoshenko here, cut in field, and his left side again. Speculative effort, really. The keeper looked to have it covered. And that's poor from Gishi. Cut out by Buryak. on the chase again here and still Oleg blocking Oleg blocking round the keeper can he finish what a goal a superb individual effort by Oleg blocking running rings round the Frank Barish defenders and eventually the keeper as well put through on the right hand side still have plenty to do here he took it beyond Pataki, who looked to try and take him down, and then as Gishi came rushing out, a real cool head. And even though there was Martosh on the line, nothing the Frank Barash defender could do, as it was a perfectly placed centre of your picture, getting the third goal on 67 minutes, a wonderful individual effort, taking it around a, a Frank Barash defender and then past the keeper. A beautifully timed run and a well-weighted goal. And really, they have been the best team by quite some distance in this competition this year. And to a man, they've played their part. Like Sevlina Boryak and Antony Konkov. And also Vladimir Muchan, who's been around longer than most of this team, still very young, remember. Like of Boryak, still just 21. Onishenko, 25, and blocking 22. And it really has been a tremendous occasion. 
And it's Dynamo Kiev that will lift the trophy for the first time. And how many more are they to come? The European this? Cup Winners' Cup final. Anderlecht to Belgium nil. West Ham United nil. Coleman. McDowell, good ball. Jennings. Word from Dave Sexton. West Ham looking promising, David. Yes, I think they're doing very well indeed. Bond. Brooking. Jennings. That was awkward, actually. A piece of very quick thinking by Jennings. He looked for the back header and got it. Hovered under the bar. Another corner to West Ham, their fourth. Played for Keith Coleman, who came up late. Haddon. Barnes. Yes, Colin Whitehill! Patton crossed it. Bond got the header, and Holland picked it up, and no one got near him. 1-0 after 28 minutes to West Ham. Patton's favourite left foot cross. Bond touched it then, was good enough in the air. Holland coming from nowhere at all. First for the ball, 1-0 after 28 minutes to West Ham United. Bruce. Docks. Lampard. Oh dear, SL! Number 11, Rensenbrink! Bond's just got a touch, and it's one for Frank Lampard walks away as Andalax celebrates a really gift go. Lampard, well, he didn't hit it back properly at all. SL was there. Bond's just got a toe to put Rensenbrink off the first time, but the second time, he made absolutely no mistake. Jennings. Brooking. Good ball. Vandale, 1-0. 2-1 there. Vandale's got it. Fine move between Rendon... Rensenbrink and Van der Elf, and West Ham pulled apart. That was a Rensenbrink ball. Van der Elf had stolen up for the back, and when he got the shooting opportunity, he really put it away. Got the space, he turned Taylor, and Mervyn Day couldn't get there. So Anderlecht two, West Ham United one. Graham Patton's corner. Pumped long for Bonds, who's there. That was Van Bint. And finally, Taylor, what a save! Taylor sets the ground in sheer frustration, and no wonder. Holland's patch was unnecessary. They all know how well he did. He really tanked that ball, and it was right up in the top corner, too. So often you see those shots wasted from the edge of the box. They don't test the goalkeeper, but that brought out the very best in Reuter. Bonds won it in the air, knocked away by the captain, and fired back by Tommy Taylor, and he was right in the top corner, too. Robson, good ball to Brooking. Jennings couldn't get there, Teeson did. Robson. McDowell. Brooking. And it's in, it's there. Beautiful goal by Robson. Trevor Brooking put it to the near post and Robson got to it. Halfway through the second half and what a match this is developing into. Tremendous move by West Ham, so quickly executed. Brooking's ball there didn't seem to spell danger but Robson was on his knees to head it in and the glance was just enough to beat the lot and put West Ham and back in this game. 2-2 two -two for Coteran. Number 11, Rensenbrink. Oh, brilliant piece of skill. Russell.
Goal kick, is it? No, the referee's seen the point, but he's let play go on. Squeeze the ball back to Hahn. Makota and a tremendous shot with his better side. It's cut out by Makota. Now Renson brings. Van der Elst again. Van der Elst throw. Harry Hart. Wessel. Oh, unlucky. Taylor slipped. And it's through the lot. He tried to make it better, and rightly so to Rensenbrink. And West Ham got away with that. Rensenbrink. Penalty is given. Harry Hard in the foreground. As Taylor and Day protest, but the decision given. And Holland was the offender. Well, there'll be a few arguments about that. West Ham seems to have got away from the problem. Redson being turned back in there. And that's the offence. And here now the penalty. Redson Brink, number 11. Dave Sexton sitting next to me. What about the penalty? Well, technically speaking, uh, it was a penalty. I think that uh, Benson Brink's legs were played instead of the ball, but it was rather harsh because I don't, there wasn't any intention of uh, playing the man. Russell. Van der Elf. by Day, who gave him very little to shoot at. He was on the edge of the six-yard box, but what a shot by Van der Elf. Played off by Robson. Brooking. <laughs> Jennings. <laughs> Holland in. Al Van Bint. Rentenbrink. <laughs> Offside not given. Van der Elf. 4 2. attempt to attack was caught then when the ball was played through by Rensenbrink with a defence caught pushing forward and square McDowell almost got back but look how well Van der Elf kept his head and even had the goalkeeper on the ground to leave himself with an empty net I thought he'd had one or two photographers were already on the pitch now Holland that is the end of this European Cup Winners' Cup final with Andelek taking the trophy by four goals to two.
Il y avait au Parc des Princes plus de 48 000 spectateurs, 48 679 exactement, dont beaucoup de nos voisins belges, venus voir l'équipe d'Anderlecht que voici, victorieuse il y a deux ans et finaliste l'an dernier. Face aux joueurs en blanc, les mots de l'Austria de Vienne ne devaient guère peser très lourd. Deuxième minute, Rezambring s'échappe, Obermeyer le pousse, l'arbitre laisse jouer, on a cru pourtant qu'il y avait fou. Voyons cette action et le départ de Rezenbring qui sera, vous le savez tous, vous avez suivi ce match sans doute en direct à la télévision, le grand homme du match, fidèle à sa réputation de grand joueur mondial. On comptait beaucoup à l'Austria de Vienne sur un joueur de 22 ans, Proaska, une des grandes vedettes du football autrichien pour ne pas dire la plus grande vedette. Le voici Proaska, il est un peu de partout, il a tenté tout ce qu'il a pu, mais disons-le, il a quelque peu déçu. Ce qui ne fut pas le cas pourtant de Gazelich, que nous avons remarqué pour notre part. Le monopole du jeu était pratiquement pour les Blancs. Rezenbring se présente d'une façon très acrobatique. Bas Baumgartner, c'était la douzième minute de jeu. Anderlecht prenait déjà une option sur ce titre qui lui est familier. Regardez la déviation de Ressenbrink et cette balle au ras du poteau. Pour la plus grande joie des Belges. Et ce n'était pas terminé. Manifestement, Anderlecht avait pris cette partie en main. Coup franc, cette fois-ci, l'arbitre à la corde. Qui va le tirer C'est encore Robbie Ressenbrink. Regardez bien. Suivez la position du mur, celle du gardien, et nous allons le revoir. Deuxième but pour les Belges, la caméra placée derrière le but va nous donner le ralenti et une idée plus exacte de la situation des joueurs et du ballon. Vous voyez que le gardien est pratiquement à gauche, le mur le masse, la balle contourne le mur au ras du poteau. C'est dur pour Baumgartner. 2-0 toujours en première mi-temps. Les Belges devaient donner le coup d'assommoir malgré quelques réactions de l'Austria de Vienne qui pêchait quand même par un peu de naïveté. Van Bins, l'arrière, s'échappe. Une balle pour lui-même. Il a passé Obermeyer et Baboum Gartner. Cette fois-ci, c'est le délire dans les tribunes occupées, bien entendu, par les supporters belges. Comment Obermeyer a-t-il pu laisser filer Van Bins Ceci, nous allons le savoir en revoyant l'action. Voilà Van Bins qui prolonge la balle vers Mayer, fait signe à son coéquipier d'y aller. Quant à lui, il a abandonné la partie. Baumgartner est sorti, mais trop tard. 3-0, c'était le score à la mi-temps. Il était difficile de concevoir que l'Austria de Vienne puisse remonter ce handicap. Et inlassablement, les Belges qui contrôlent cette fois-ci le jeu vont assurer. Regardez, Van Bins, encore lui, même adversaire, Robert Mayer, qui tire avant d'être contré, la balle dans la lucarne. Ce n'est pas une très bonne soirée, ni pour Robert Mayer, qui s'est toujours trouvé sur la trajectoire de la balle, sauf pour le coup franc, ni pour le gardien Bob Gartner. Regardez Van Bins. 
Pierre du gauche, la balle en cloche dans la lucarne droite. Monsieur Francky, président de l'UFA, remet la coupe à Rezenbrin, qui a été le héros du match et que nous retrouverons en Argentine dans la sélection de Hollande, associé à René Van de Kerkhoff, à Johnny Reck, une attaque qui, ma foi, aura très belle allure et que nous suivrons plus particulièrement. Une équipe qui sera parmi les favoris. Alors... Les saludamos cordialmente desde el Estadio San Jacob en Basilea, momentos antes de que comience la gran final de la Copa de Europa de ganadores de Copa que van a disputar el Fútbol Club Barcelona y el Fortuna de Düsseldorf. En imagen el árbitro húngaro, señor Karori Palotay, con los jueces de línea de la misma nacionalidad y los capitanes de ambos conjuntos, Asensi por el Barcelona y Seve por el Fortuna de Düsseldorf de banderas alemanistas de las distintas redes europeas e internacionales son hombres curtidos en estos avatares y me confesaban hace muy pocos instantes que no habían visto jamás nada parecido más de Treña y del resto del país han llegado por distintos medios de locomoción a Suiza para ver el partido 16 aviones especiales, 4 trenes especiales, más de 300 autocares Hoy Basilea, la tranquila ciudad, se ha de estar fríos para poder transmitir con ecuanimidad el partido. Pero es tan terrible el griterío, tan estremecedor lo que está ocurriendo, que es muy difícil el poder ofrecer a ustedes una transmisión normal. Comenzó ya el partido, ahí tenemos a Carrasco, que ha recibido de Alvaravejo. Ahí está Migueli. Enviando ya el balón sobre Albaladejo. Ha profundizado a Rechac. Intenta desmarcarse por el lado derecho Sánchez. Atención, ahí está Sánchez. ¡Sánchez! ¡Sánchez! ¡Y gol! A los cuatro minutos y medio. Sánchez acaba de marcar el primer tanto del partido. Vea la repetición. Como Rechac avanza. Se desmarca Sánchez. Pase muy inteligente sobre Sánchez, arrancando en posición correcta. Ha pecado muy bien a la pelota y el primer tanto para el Barcelona sube al marcador exactamente a los cuatro minutos y medio del primer tiempo. Fortuna cero. Y a punto ha estado ahora Carrasco de obtener de nuevo una posición idónea para continuar avanzando. Está atacando el equipo alemán por el centro. Ahora un poco de desplazamiento de fuego hacia las alas. Y el delantero centro, Bomer. De nuevo Bomer. Artola se le escapa la pelota. Y el gol del empate, señoras y señores, conseguido por Klaus Alo. El número 10. Minuto 7 y medio. Klaus Alo. Acaba de conseguir el tanto del empate. Vean la repetición. Con esta jugada de Klaus Alo, precisamente, que es el que toca el balón con la cabeza. El balón va hacia Bomber, delantero centro. Le pasa la pelota de nuevo. Bomber tira ahora con potencia. Se le escapa la pelota a Artola. Y Klaus Alov es el que mete el pie, a pesar de que Thomas Alov también lo intentaba. Empate a uno. Ahora un poquitín ya más de nerviosismo. Ahí tenemos a Joaquín Rife, el hombre que se agachaba, junto con el doctor González Adrio. Y demás elementos técnicos. El ha conseguido por Sánchez a los 4 minutos y medio. Y el del empate por Klaus Alops a los 7 y medio. Arranque ahora de Carrasco. No tiene sin embargo a nadie que la apoye. Atención, Carrasco ya dentro del área. Y penalti. Penalti. El señor Caroli Palotay ha indicado penalti del equipo alemán. En la persona de Carrasco. Vean la repetición. Como Carrasco va avanzando. Se cruza CB. Le derriba y penalti. Penalti de todos un poquito. Intención en el lanzamiento. La anda Rechac. ¡Qué lástima, señoras y señores! Ha lanzado Rechac. Un hombre con una característica habilidad para lanzar este tipo de penas. Vean ustedes, flojo. No ajustado ni muchísimo menos. ¡Qué pena! Vamos a ver de nuevo la repetición. 
ahí está Rechac ha tirado muy flojo y el guardameta Daniel y lanzamiento ahora favorable al Barcelona mientras Sensi dentro del área Nesken lanzamiento a Sensi y Daniel señoras y señores ha tenido una fortuna extra el juego pero este no sale como sería de desear ahí está Rechac atención buen disparo el de Rechac y otro, hay mucho espacio uno de los recuerdos que el Barcelona ha entregado al equipo alemán el banderín del club con el bordado de la fecha de hoy Rechak, Nesken Krankel a la izquierda al baladejo también ahora al ataque, atención Rechak Carrasco estaba dentro del área, le pilló un poco la pelota contra pie, atención y Asensi, gol Asensi acaba de marcar a los 34 minutos el segundo tanto para el Barcelona en jugada de Carrasco vean cómo le pilla contra pie el balón sin embargo Cebe tampoco está muy al tanto logra llevarse la pelota a Carrasco se le escapará ahora a Daniel y Asensi Mete el pie y marca el segundo tanto. Barcelona 2, Fortuna 1. De nuevo la repetición. Asensio oportunísimo. Con la pierna derecha marcando el segundo tanto para el Fútbol Club Barcelona. De esquina y dentro del área para el Barcelona Asensi, Krankel, Nesken y Carrasco. Despejó Feitel al balabejo Nesken. Y a punto ha estado Nesken de conseguir el tercer tanto en este pase de Albaladejo. Y ahí está Nesken en el centro de la imagen. Fortuna 1. El Barcelona marcó los goles. Sánchez a los 4 y medio y a los 34 a Sensi. Atención. Atención. Phil acaba de marcar el tanto del empate. 41 minutos. Y Phil en un fallo tremendo de toda la defensa del Barcelona ha conseguido el tanto del empate. Veamos la repetición. Un centro parabólico, cuatro defensores, cinco ahora, nadie llega. Arzola no sabe qué hacer. Y Sil marca prácticamente a placer el tanto del empate. Un gol. Rechá que tiene una lucha terrible con Conen. A ver, Sánchez. Y gol, pero no vale señores, no vale el tanto, de ahí la posibilidad de la defensa, puesto que el árbitro había indicado ya fuera de juego. Smith. Ya sobre Klaus Alos. Ha ensayado el disparo desde muy lejos Klaus Alos. Pate a dos, se jugaría una prórroga de 15 minutos, de 30 minutos, o sea, dos tiempos de 15. Atención, Kankel. Y Kankel ha tenido con su buena pierna... Con la izquierda y dentro del área, la oportunidad. Carrasco, por el defensa Frey, fue sancionado por el árbitro, lo lanzó Rechac con su habitual manera, pero sin la potencia suficiente para que Daniel no llegara a la pelota. Daniel no tuvo apenas dificultades en detener el balón, como si adivinara perfectamente por el lado que él... Retrasándose lentamente el equipo del Barcelona y avanzando con igual parsimonia el alemán, Lanzamiento sobre Lung, atención. Jugada casi de pizarra con avance lento. Pases casi triangulados entre dos jugadores. Creyéndose en realidad al ataque. Atención, Rechac, atención. Y Rechac, gol. Rechac, señoras y señores, acaba de conseguir el tercer tanto para el Barcelona. Minuto 13. Veamos, Rechac. Se quedó aquí, bien, lanza puerta perfectamente. Un disparo tremendo, no excesivamente fuerte, pero sí fabulosamente colocado. Y el Barcelona una vez más se adelanta en el marcador. Barcelona 3, Fortuna 2. Ya el Barcelona tuvo ventaja, veamos de nuevo la repetición. 
Primero 1-0, 1-1, luego 2-1 siempre para el Barcelona, 2-2 y finalmente 3-2. Observen el panorama de los graderíos con las señeras y las banderas barcelonistas, animando de forma impresionante al Fútbol Club Barcelona. Falta un minuto para que termine la primera parte de la prórroga. Barcelona 3, Borussia de Düsseldorf, eh, Fortuna de Düsseldorf 2. 3-2 para el Barcelona, a punto de finalizar la primera parte de la prórroga. Gilea, final de la Copa de Europa de vencedores de Copa, en el instante en que el señor Parotay indica el final del primer tiempo de la prórroga. Y ahora sí que se pone bastante más serio, indica a los jugadores que no va a permitir ni un solo instante de reposo, que cambien rápidamente de campo y que se inicie la segunda parte los jugadores como ven ustedes le hacen caso omiso se van hacia la banda procurando refrescarse y recoger trocitos de limón los jugadores del Barcelona mientras que los del Fortuna de Düsseldorf permanecen prácticamente en su terreno sin acercarse ni un solo momento a la banda y continúa el espectáculo multitudinario y múltico Smith, Nesken y la porfía de Nesken y su gran punto honor levándose la pelota sobre Carrasco. Atención, arrancando en posición perfecta. Continúa Carrasco con Baltes. Crankel, buen pase, atención, Crankel y gol. Crankel, señoras y señores, acaba, creemos, de sentenciar la final de la Recopa de Europa. Crankel. En gran jugada de Carrasco a pase de Nesken. Vean la repetición como Carrasco para la pelota. Se desmarca Crankel, le pasa el balón. Y Crankel perfectamente con su pierna izquierda bate al guardameta Daniel y coloca el 4 en el más. Balón para Cebe, uno de los grandes luchadores del equipo alemán. Lund. Klaus Alok, un remate y finalmente el número 11 Silis marca el tercer tanto, lo que coloca aún más el dramatismo en la eliminatoria. A los nueve minutos, Sil, 4-3 en el marcador. Veamos la repetición, señoras y señores, de esta dramática final. Con Klaus Alok, Sil pega la pelota en, creemos que es Martínez. Llega Sil, mete el pie y marca el tercer tanto. Lo que Jack no va a perder aún más tiempo, esperando que se consuman los últimos segundos. Rechac falló un penalti, pero consiguió el tercer gol, el que desnivelaba y daba moral al Barcelona, para encajar después el Fortuna, el cuarto y último tanto, en preciosa jugada de Carrasco, con maravilloso pase sobre Krankel. Pasa ya un minuto del tiempo reglamentario. El señor Caroli Palotay, árbitro húngaro del partido, remiso en señalar el final. Y ahora, ahora señoras y señores, indica el final del partido. Se llega pues al término de estos emocionantes, tremendos y dramáticos 120 minutos con el justo triunfo del Fútbol Club Barcelona, arropado por una masa de socios impresionante, sin par en el mundo como representan las imágenes gráficas que sirve Mundo Visión a través de las cámaras de la televisión suiza. Un espectáculo inenarrable, fabuloso, sensacional, señoras y señores. Las imágenes que nos ofrece la televisión suiza, transmitidas, esparcidas a todo el orbe, son gráficas y tremendamente humanas. A pesar de las vallas, a pesar... De los alambres, algunos seguidores han logrado cruzarlas y están intentando por todos los medios abrazar a los que los hombres, a los hombres que durante 120 minutos han sido el centro de atracción de millones y millones de personas. Indispensables para entregar la copa al capitán del FUR en cuanto pueda escaparse del agobio y del asedio a que está siendo sometido por parte de los aficionados que han logrado colarse a través de las vallas. Esta copa que ven ustedes en el estrella detrás a Crankel. Crankel se dio perfecta cuenta de que Carrasco no podía. Was a tackle by Sunderland.
Bonoff tends to take the throw-ins and the free kicks. Oh, he's found Kempis! Good save by Pat Jennings. And Arsenal caught out at the throw-in, and Kempis given the kind of space from which he scored so many goals, and denied then only by the Arsenal goalkeeper. Played back for Ricks to shoot, it hit his own player, Stapleton. Talbot turns it back to Nelson. Stapleton well forward, Price is there, it's Talbot! Strikes the defender, it's still free though. O'Leary. Stapleton's up! Oh, and taken out by the defender, Karate on the line. David Price is injured in an earlier incident, but Stapleton was so close. And you'll see how close from this. Karate, the fullback, saved his goalkeeper. Best pieces of individual skill we've seen initially there by Rixey. Won the ball and then here he is again doing the same. He's found Stapleton this time. Can he find Price? He can. Price shoots. Well, I think Arsenal deserved the shot on goal there after the work Ricks had done. And David Price volleyed it with his right foot. And as Pereira went across his line, the ball dropping the wrong side of the post for Arsenal. The ambition to motivate and try and put things right. Here's Brady. Brady shot! Oh, he saved it! Pereira turning it round. And Brady there went inside his man, and it was on his left foot as he picked up pace. And Pereira came to his left. <laughs> and yours too there from Solsona, beautifully done. Plays the ball down for Bonoff. Bonoff is through here with Tempest just inside him, it's Bonoff gone all the way! And Jennings saves, in true Pat Jennings style. Threw himself down and got either the legs or the body in the way. But Reiner Bonoff, a player of his quality, I wonder whether he should have scored, it's easy to say that from here. But he was clean through it, but the angle wasn't good, and Jennings came to narrow it anyway, on the post, on the six-yard line. He fell, Pat Jennings, and again, it nearly went through his legs, but not quite. As Candelio got his foot in there. Brady. Cut it back for Ricks to shoot. It was going wide, and out again. Oh, what a good effort. So close as Young came in at the far post there with Sunderland. That was the nearest Arsenal have been. Graham Ricks fired it with his left foot and it flew across the face of the goal. And as Sunderland came in, it was so, so close. And the crowd beginning to settle themselves down, thinking it'll be extra time, but this is Talbot for Arsenal. Talbot for Stapleton. And now for Pat Rice. And now for Liam Brady, and it's whistle's gone. Extra time. Resuscitation of all types now. And Arsenal and Valencia go into the extra half hour. Solsona. Solsona shot. Good effort by this industrious midfield player. Kempis drives one and it was bending but not enough. On the right hand side of the penalty area they use Kempis to try and bend them with his left foot round the wall, round the goalkeeper. This is Rice. Big Willie Young is up there stretching. Following up is Ricks. On this side is David O'Leary. And Sunderland tries to get in. Stapleton this is. O'Leary. Sunderland, no. No, offside. Offside when the ball was originally played to O'Leary. No goal. David O'Leary in the attack. Trying to bend the ball in. But he was offside there when he crossed the ball. Before Alan Sunderland ran in and finished things off. Yet again. And he's going to blow any second here. And he has, and it's penalties. 
and Pat saved it. Oh, Pat Jennings has saved from Kempis. What a start for Arsenal. He took it with his famous left foot and Pat knew which way it was going to go. And what a save. But don't forget, this is just the beginning of the competition. Brady against Pereira. Oh, and he saved it as well. Goodness me. We're back to square one again. They both missed. Liam Brady went for the goalkeeper's left. And Pereira must have moved. Look, he moved his feet. And surely that should have been retaken, in my view, from here. But you can argue about that yourselves. Solsona then against Jennings. A goal! Struck with all the venom of a man who knew he was going to score. Daniel Solsona. Oh, he hammered that. And Jennings, even then, threw himself to his right, but it flew into the net above him. Here. Stapleton. Puts it away. So it's one all. Stapleton with his right foot. The goalkeeper made another good attempt to save that, actually. Pablo. And Pablo scores to make it 2-1. And put the pressure back on Arsenal. And I think Alan Sunderland. Pablo is a left-footed player. And he beat Pat Jennings down in his right-hand corner. What? Sunderland. Goal! Pereira moved again, as a matter of fact, but it's in. I think this goalkeeper's moving all the time from these. Anyway, it's a goal. It's 2-2. Two -two. Castellanos against Jennings. Oh, it was in on the underside of the bar, I think. I think it actually probably went in off the underside here. Castellanos making it 3-2 to Valencia. And it went in off the underside of the bar. A bit fortunate, maybe. But Brian Torbert's under immense pressure here. Talbot for Arsenal. Oof. Well, it went in. Now then, it's going to be 3-3 with one each to take. And Reiner Bonhoff, as we see Talbot's penalty go in again there, he put it right in the corner, didn't he? Keeper went near it again, though. Valencia into a 4-3 lead, and there's pandemonium on the touchline. Bonhoff now. Scores! And Hollins must score! to keep Arsenal in the competition. Bonhoff has made it 4-3 to Valencia, and if John Hollins misses, then Arsenal have been beaten. But if he scores, then other players have got to be recruited from the bench to continue the competition in sudden death fashion. John Hollins, after all these years in the game, and Paul Barra, no wonder he looks concerned. And he scored! Well, there's no greater pressure than that. And now we're 4-4, and it's sudden death. In other words, the, the actual competition is over, but it's square. So now each side will go on taking them until somebody misses. Different players each time still. But of course, even if you miss, the other side must have the chance to put theirs away, and vice versa. It's got to be an equal number taken by each team. And centre-back, Ricardo Arias. This is sudden death now. It's a question of each side taking one until somebody misses with the even number of kicks taken. Arias. Oh, it just went in underneath Pat Jennings, I think. Or perhaps just to one side of him. Just see it again here. Arias hit it with his right foot a little bit nervously, I thought. But as Jennings goes to the right, it does in fact go just by his arm. So, Graham Ricks has to score to keep Arsenal alive. If he misses, Valencia win. That's why Arsenal, taking their penalties second, are under greater pressure until Valencia miss another one.
Graham Ricks as Paul Barron watches again. There are one or two of them actually who uh, don't really want to watch this. But now Ricks. Oh, he saved it! And Valencia have won the Cup Winners' Cup because Graham Ricks' penalty was saved by Carlos Pereira.